Hello Year 9, this is Miss Sutton. I hope you're all well, looking after yourselves and taking care of your families and uh, coping with uh, lockdown, finding plenty to occupy your time. Um, as you will have seen from Show My Homework, there is some Lord of the Flies work on there. There's an e-book and um, a booklet for you to fill in and I think you should have a go at those things to uh, get yourselves ready for studying GCSE. Um, but I'm here to show you a slightly different approach to your reading of Lord of the Flies that might help you um, in the long term. So this is the version I'm going to be using. There are different versions. It doesn't really make a difference. The story inside is the same. Um, it's just that if, if there are any references to pages, they might be slightly different. But I don't think that's going to be a big barrier to your learning. So let's get started. So Lord of the Flies by William Golding. Okay. Um, when you write it in a piece of writing, make sure that you write it like this. Not, not underlined, but with a capital L, capital L. F. If you're writing about the title of the story, then you use these inverted commas as well. Um, if you're writing about a character in the story called the Lord of the Flies, then um, you don't use these inverted commas here. For the purposes of taking notes, just write L of F. Okay, so the author is William Golding. He lived from 1911 to 1993, and those dates are significant because um, Britain was involved in two world wars during that time, and um, 1914 was the date. Uh, that uh, World War One broke out and ended in 1911. So William got 1918. Sorry, so World War One was 1914 to 1918. William Golding would have been very young at the time, and as he died in uh, 1993, um, he therefore saw two two world wars. And William Golding joined the navy in 1940. Uh, the Royal Navy he did did well. Went through the ranks. Right, rose through the ranks. Um, World War Two broke out in 1939 and lasted until 1945. So he was a part of the war, and he witnessed the sinking of the German ship, the Bismarck, which was a significant event during World War Two. Okay. Um, so we're going to look at um, Lord of the Flies using a sort of a, a two-pronged approach. So the first thing we're going to look at is what we learn. So that's what Golding writes. We're used to doing this in class. We take note of what he tells us. Okay, and then we're going to look at um, interpretation, and this is going to be different for different people. So when you read something that Golding writes, what does it mean to you? So the first thing you think of is, what does it mean to me? What might other people have to say about it? So what it might mean to others? So if Golding gives you a fact um, about a character or tells you what a character says, what does it mean to you and what does it mean to others? Most importantly, we're not actually writing about the characters are we? So this is what we've talked about in class. It, we're writing about Golding. We're writing about his choices of language. So it's great to immerse yourself in a story as though you're there. But for GCSE, to be a critical reader, you have to write about the writer, the choices that they make. So it might be the words that they chose, or it might be where they chose to write something. Okay. So these are the characters that we're going to be looking at, the main characters. The, the big characters are Ralph, Piggy, Jack, Roger, Simon, and then there are some minor characters. And there's a there's a character, well, two characters. There are twins called Sam and Eric, but they become known as Sam and Eric. So some people might argue that they're not minor characters, but um, for me, I'd probably put them in the minor characters category. Okay. And then there are several themes, um, and these can change depending on your perspective and um, your teacher as well. So good and evil, civilization versus brutality and savagery, order versus chaos, loss of innocence, uh, because the boys are all still young on the island, so that's got to do with childhood, war and violence. So um, the story takes place against a background of war. It's not World War Two. It's an invented war, an atomic war. Um, man versus nature, because there's an unspoiled island and uh, the boys uh, end up on it. So it's about uh, the effects of man um, on nature. Um, individualism versus community. Uh, so what that means is just thinking about yourselves versus working as a team to um, support others. Um, spirituality, so that's sort of the non-physical, your feelings, could be religion. Um, weakness and strength, so that's physical and mental weakness and strength. Leadership is a huge theme in this 
um, novel and of course fear I mean they are still um, only children now don't worry if, if you don't know what some of this language means I mean you could look it up but this will make more sense as you go through the themes and then this uh, concept concept is just a, a um, means idea really the island as a microcosm the island as a small world in itself so what that means is um, the different types of character that there are in the story represent all the different types of character that there are in the world and that's just a very simple way of putting it but again hopefully you'll understand more as we go through and what i would do is i'd set certainly for um, to begin with I would set things out like this I'd have two columns based on the sheet that I showed you earlier um, let's get hold of it again what we learn and interpretation I'd have two columns for each of the characters and each of the themes and probably for that concept of the island as a microcosm and I would start writing down the things that I know, that Golding tells me, or that are obvious. And I would leave a big gap in between so that I can put plenty of notes there as well. If you haven't got plenty of paper, if you haven't got an exercise book, um, and if you can't get a hold of a computer, there, there might be some way that, uh, that you can find a way around it. But it certainly... Um, across time interpretations might change you might add to thought so it's definitely worth putting a, a quite a big gap in there okay so i'm just going to go through a few examples with you I'm going to read the very first part of the text now we don't know at the beginning that the ca first character we we meet is called ralph but we, we find out quite soon so that's why i've, I've sort of cut out some time um, by just putting the the name ralph up there so let me show you how my reading led to these ideas that I've got here. Okay, so the boy with fair hair lowered himself down the last few feet of rock and began to pick his way towards the lagoon. Though he had taken off his school sweater and trailed it now from one hand, his grey shirt stuck to him and his hair was plastered to his forehead. All round him, the long scar smashed into the jungle was a bath of heat. He was clambering heavily among the creepers and broken trunks when a bird, a vision of red and yellow, flashed upwards with a witch-like cry, and this cry was echoed by another. Okay, now I'm going quite quickly here, but um, you can pause and you can also do your own reading at your own pace. Okay, so I know that uh, this, this character here is Ralph. So I know he's the first character introduced. And remember I said you've got to ask yourself why has Golding done this? Okay. So I think he introduces Ralph first to make us understand that he's an important character. Okay. And I know from my own knowledge that the story also ends with Ralph. It only ends with his thoughts because the last character mentioned isn't Ralph at all, but it's Ralph's head we're inside when the story ends. And I'm I'm thinking to myself, well, there will be more to say about that. But for the time being, these are the thoughts that I've had. So that's why I need to leave plenty of space there. Um, the first five words are the boy with fair hair. Um, fair hair perhaps is, is linked to this idea of innocence in stories throughout history. Um, very often the, the characters with most goodness and the heroic characters are very often... Um, fair haired and pale skinned um, and whether that's right or wrong and we we do it these days that that is the case in um in literature from the past so that might have something to do with that it might not it might be a, a point that we end up crossing out and saying well that's not relevant at all i think it probably is because it comes so early on in the story the fact that he's not named he's known as the boy with the fair hair suggests some significance Okay, so he's introduced when the when the others are. What I mean by that is he has to say his name to somebody before we find out. We don't have that secret knowledge that readers often do. So our experience is as much like the boys as Golding can make it. That's all I mean by that note there. It, it, I know what it means and that's what you have to do. You have to work in the way that um, is best for you. And I've also found out that Ralph is wearing his 
uniform and you know sort of putting myself in the position of a year nine coming to this book for the first time well I think it's significant that he's wearing his uniform but I can't quite work out why yet so be confident in leaving a space for you to put your interpretation later on okay now we do meet another character very soon called Piggy and I'm going to um, pop my notes up about that so that you can perhaps use those or not use those depending on what your interpretation of things are but this sheet here is going to be about the island okay so for the island I'm going to write what we learn And I'm going to write interpretation. Oh, I'm going to try and write <laughs> interpretation there. So what we learn on the left, interpretation. On the right, very dry hands, all that hand washing I'm having to do lately. So what do we learn about the island in the beginning? Um, well, we learn that there's some rock and you might be sitting there thinking, oh, come on, miss. How is that going to be important? Well, I have uh, knowledge that it is important, okay? So you might go, okay, well, I'll write rock down, but I, I don't understand why it's important yet. And we might do later. So let's leave a bit of space just there. We also know that it's very hot, just from this first paragraph. Um, his grey shirt stuck to him, his hair was plastered to his forehead, so it's very hot. The long gas smash into the jungle was a buff of heat and I'm thinking well I've only just started reading it so I'm not entirely sure why but is is it to do with being oppressive does Golding want us to understand that there's an oppressive atmosphere and the different associations with heat connotations is just saying uh, associations in a different way um connotations of heat things like anger and bad temper are those going to be relevant later on well if i'm putting myself in your position i don't really know but at least i started to think about those associations but we do know that when it's very, very hot, things are uncomfortable. What else do I know? Well, I know there's jungle there. I'm just going to pop that up a little bit. And I might be sitting at home going, well, I know there's jungle, but so what? I'll work it out later because it's not really saying anything to me at the moment, but I have at least made a note that there's jungle and I may have other things to write down here as well. Um, and then this this is an odd thing to write here that there was a a scar smashed into the jungle well a scar is an injury and it's been smashed into the jungle so it suggests violence and if we go back to our sheet of themes, which I'm just trying to find, and we're, we're talking about man versus nature, we're talking about war and violence. So, and we talk about brutality and savagery. So, maybe it's got something to do with those things. But it's okay not to know exactly what you think at the moment this stage we're just writing down thoughts so all I really wanted to do was say that this is a way in to thinking about Lord of the Flies I'm going to try and put some helpful videos up um, and particularly for anyone who's struggling and I will confess that when I first read Lord of the Flies even though I was a, 
a teacher and I already had a degree in English, I actually found this quite easy to get, uh, sorry, quite difficult to get my head around at first. So don't worry if it's a little bit confusing and mystifying. We're supposed to be confused because it's confusing for the boys in the story. So there's a point in itself. Okay. Right, well, continue to uh, stay safe and take care of each other. And I'll try and put some helpful videos up as and when um, the technology works. Okay, take care.